how'd it feel to uh, be named a Bowerman finalist? Yeah, that was really amazing. I'm super grateful for that. Uh, wasn't really expecting it, to be honest. Um, didn't do so well in the discus at NCAAs, so um, the call came to surprise. Um, and it just feels really good. It's something I'm really proud of. Um, hung up the phone and just started crying. I was just so, so proud of myself for that. So um, it feels really good, yeah. Did you like take a look at the semifinals last week and kind of weigh your odds? I did, yeah. There's a lot of amazing, talented athletes on there. So um, kind of for it to wind down to top three and for me to be on that list is, is really cool and just really grateful for it. I think you could be only the second Medford native to c compete in the Olympics if you get there. Just what would that mean to you to represent your hometown and, and be thrown in there with the names like Dick Fosbury? Yeah, I mean, that's just an honor. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of mind blowing to me um, growing up in kind of a smaller town um, and being able to represent that part of Oregon and Oregon as a whole. Um, I mean, that means everything to me. Oregon has my heart, so um, I want to represent it in any way that I can. And the Olympics is a pretty big stage to do it. So that'd be a great, great opportunity. How did you spend the last week? Have you kind of ignored the trials? Have you been out there watching? Have you been trying to just focus on your own thing? Yeah, it's 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 a nice balance. Um, I go out there, I watch my teammate Shelby compete. I've watched um, some of our runners compete as well. So, you know, it's a balance of supporting my teammates and kind of being a part of this whole trials community. Um, but I also do have days where kind of like my own days, my training days. Um, like today, for example, I you know, I'm here and then I have my recovery massage and I'm home. So it's kind of just like some days I really focus in and some days it's like, OK, I can be a good teammate today and, you know, kind of give my attention to other people instead. The NCAAs are a, are a huge stage, too. But just do you think that the Olympic trials will feel different? Or are you trying not to think about it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard not to think about it. I think it's definitely going to be different. Um, you know, there's a lot of really big track fans out here that's come from a long way just to watch this meet. So um, to be to be able to compete in front of them and hopefully perform well for them um you know it's 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 a really cool opportunity and um i think you know the, the pressure is a little on um but you know everybody's going to use that um their own way so yeah it, i think it'll feel a little different a little more a little more hyped what's the biggest piece of advice if any of have you gotten in the last few weeks just leading up to this yeah, that's actually a great question i have gotten every person i've met um that's competed i've asked can you give me some 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 advice and my coach calls it pearls of wisdom so um, I've gotten, you know, some advice from Joe and uh, Ashley Kovacs. They've told me a lot about uh, competing and, you know, do your own thing, um, you know, do, play your own game, you know, trust your training, that kind of stuff. And then uh, yesterday I actually got to meet Michelle Carter um, and I got some advice from her and that was amazing. I grew up studying her and um, to be able to, to learn from her and just, you know, hug a gold medalist. That's kind of cool. So it was really great. You mentioned how you've been able to, you, you've been balancing your training. W would you say for the most part, your training since NCAAs has kind of stayed the same, more or less? How would you describe it? Yeah, I would say it's generally the same. The only thing now is uh, I get to cut discus out. So I'm just focused on shot put. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot more focused, um, maybe throw some more speed in there, um, ramp up some of the end of the throws and things like that. But for the most part, it's everything's the same. You know, we're not changing anything. We're not doing anything crazy. We're just, you know, doing our own thing and um, competing to the best of my ability. So do you know the Kovacs before you talked to them? Um, I knew of them, but, uh, but like, I don't, I think I've talked to them maybe one time, but that was, you know, I met him cause I was working pre-Fontaine and I gave him a little fist bump, that kind of thing. <laughs> but this is my first time actually having a conversation and they're great people, great, great people. So it was, it was really nice. And I got to watch their practice and everything. So. How'd that come about? Well, I was just walking into Hayward for a practice. They were walking in at the same time. We shook hands and, you know, uh, he was doing a more like a mobility practice and I was practicing. So got to kind of talk to him a little bit and he got to see my throwing and stuff like that. So you said you wanted to throw some Hayward magic on the fact that it's at your home track. Does that give you any sense of maybe extra needed confidence or comfortability? Yeah, I would definitely say comf comfortability. Um, you know, this is this is my backyard, so I'm here almost every day. And um, it's nice to have that kind of in my back pocket and um, you know, the Hayward magic never, never lets me down. So um, I'm just excited to feel that energy and feel the fans and everything. The, the cutthroat nature of the Olympic trials has been on display the last four days, yeah. especially in the throws. I mean, the women's hammer was a little chaotic. Yeah. Yesterday, somebody, a big name fell in discus. Yep. Do you ignore all that? Do you, are you, are you cognizant of that? Yeah, um, I think I take that and I kind of just 
put it into, you know, the fact that you really just have to do what you do every day. This isn't, you don't have to put on a big show, especially uh, the prelim day. It's nothing big. It's nothing crazy. You know, do what I do, what you do in training, show up, make it to that final and then compete after that. So I think it just kind of puts the pressure on um, just really being you and showing up that day. Um, but yeah, hard to ignore those. Those are some big names that got that fell the other day. Can we get back to Michelle Carter? What was it like to meet her? You grew up watching her videos. Didn't yes. You? Yes, I did. Um, so I got to compete against her, actually, uh, her last USA's a couple years ago. So um, I've met her before, but we didn't talk because we were competition mode. So I was kind of in awe, you know, baby Jada looking up. <laughs> um, so that was great. And then I actually got to have a conversation with her yesterday and talk a little bit. And she's just so genuine, amazing person. Um, I love what she does for the throws world. I love what she does for the black community. So um, just talking with her, I'm still in awe of her and super, super happy to meet her. She's, she's amazing. How do you get ready to meet somebody you idolize like that? Stay very calm, <laughs> stay very calm. Don't freak them out. Um, show them the love, but you know, keep composed a little bit. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with, uh, when I meet people. <laughs> and what did you want to know from her? There's the shot put side, but there's also the involvement with the community side, which seems very important to you too. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, our conversation was more based on, uh, competition and, um, going into trials and things like, um, mentality going into trials and, you know, some mind games that might, may come or may not come during. So, um, kind of just strategy for mental and then strategy for how to compete um, is mostly what we talked about. Can you take anything from, I, obviously you competed at USA's before, but Olympic trials a lot different, but w what was your experience like for that? Can you, uh, what, what do you remember most from that? Yeah, the first Olympic trials, a lot of nerves. Second Olympic trial, sorry, USA's. First USA's, yeah. a lot of nerves. Uh, second USA's was more um, focused in, a little more you know, locked in and mental and things like that, figuring out my way around um, competing with really big people, really big names that I look at every day. Um, so I think it's kind of prepared me now. Um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of these people throw. I've competed against these women before, you know, and so just having that experience kind of behind me helps helps with the confidence a little bit, helps with normalize everything and um, things like that. Do you feel like one of the big names? I do not. Um, I'm aware that I kind of am, but I think mentally I'm kind of going in as, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a collegiate thrower. Uh, my big meet is NCAAs. This this is my chance to kind of shake some things up in the throws world, have some fun, and see where the chips land. So, yeah. The air mattresses back down in the house. Everybody yes, coming are. up. <laughs> Thursday, air mattresses will be all over the house. Um, I got some family friends coming. I got a lot of family coming. Um, and my mom's coming, obviously. And so I'm excited to have, have my little cheering squad out there as well. Yeah. Do you ever look back to when your high school coaches said they had to talk you into doing this? <laughs> I do a lot, yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a funny story. Um, you know, I was a multi-sport athlete when I was young and um, didn't want to pick up track and field because I was so busy with my other sports. And um, I had my coach Vasquez basically convince me to throw shot put and ended up being pretty good at it. So I'm glad he did. I'm glad I'm here today. And, you know, every single person that's part of my journey, I am grateful for any support I've gotten. So. How did they convince you? You had so much else going on. Yeah, he basically just kept pushing it. Every basketball practice, you should really, show, you should really throw the shot put. You should really throw. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really cool. How early did that start? Because Pete kind of has some roots in middle school sports too. Mm -hmm. Did he start putting that in your ear very yep. early? Yep, he was my middle school uh, basketball coach and he was the high school um, varsity track coach. So uh, he was kind of giving me hints during middle school, then I did it in middle school and I've done it ever since, yeah. How did you learn that then? Like when you're an athlete in all those different sports, there's a different level of technical work, right? With shots. So yeah. what was that transition like from the other sports? Yeah, when you're young, throwing is just kind of getting reps in. It's not necessarily based on technique. So um, when I was in the younger days, it was just about learning how to love the sport, learning how to throw, what shot put is. Um, it was kind of in those days where coaches made you do every event just to try it all. So, um, you know, just learning to love track and I came pretty quick. I love the sport. I love the diversity. Um, so I'm super grateful. Yeah. You said you ran the short relay too? Yes. I was a four by one. I was a 100. Um, fastest woman in my high school, not to brag. But uh, yeah, it was fun. I was I was a, a short sprinter for a little bit and then 
um, dropped that when I wanted to start focusing in a little bit. When he started coming and talking to you about that, was was he kind of like on the throwing thing? or Because he's he's more of a deep-rooted running guy. Was yeah. he trying to get you to be like a sprinter or was he trying to get you to yeah. throw? He was stuck on shot put. I, he knew, I think he knew from the beginning, like shot put is your thing. Um, I specifically, that's the first thing he told me, you should throw shot put. So, um, yeah, I mean, he saw it in me from the very beginning. Is he going to be around for the meet? Yeah, I I'm, I'm think he's coming for trials, and also Aaron Williams will be here. So um, I'll have my North Medford crew coming as well. When you switched to college and there was a difference, they told me you'd never lifted a weight in high school, didn't even go to practice all that much early on. What was that transition like when you got to here? Yeah, um, the transition for not lifting to lifting was huge. Um, a lot of learning, a lot of soreness. Um, <laughs> it was uh, but we have, I mean, the best lifting coaches probably in the world here. So I'm um, working with Coach Radcliffe uh, my first two years, and I worked with Coach K and Rad this year. Um, taught me everything I know in the weight room um, as far as strength and um, explosiveness, any Olympic lifts. I didn't know what Olympic lift was before I got here. So um, it's pretty cool that I got to learn it, and I have a lot to grow on in the weight room still. Um, probably one of the weakest throwers out there. So got a little bit of growth to have on that aspect. I know this is a super random question. Did you ever meet Dick Fosbury? Like at a camp or anything like that? I never met him. No. I've heard all about him. All about him. Yeah. Super cool. You mentioned also um, after NCAAs that you were connected to Oregon and to Eugene and to doing social work and to doing all that sort of stuff. Can you talk a little bit more about how you got that interest and where that came from? You said your mom is in a mental health field too? Yeah. So my mom used to be a um, drug and alcohol substance counselor. Um, and so I kind of grew up in the social work world, um, learned, you know, how, the importance of helping people. And I think that's kind of when I fell in love with it was just seeing the impact that my mom had when I was younger and things like that. Um, and then coming into college, I got my undergrad in psych, learned a lot about that. And now I'm in um, my master's program for prevention science, which focuses a lot on social work, uh, mental health, drug use, things like that. So um, it just felt right, a right avenue for me. and. Um, it's something I'm really passionate about and love doing. So, um, yeah. Your Instagram, you have, have some videos of yourselves like failing in the weight room and some stuff like that. Is that connected yeah. to the mental health issue, interest you have? I'm just curious about why you put that up there and what kind of response you get. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think especially on the social media side, a lot of people put just the just the good. And, um, you know, I want to include some some realistic aspects of uh, the weight room and throws. You know, we have hard days. Um, I have a lot of fails in the weight room, a lot of, you know, just slow days um, on the track and things like that. So that's just kind of to normalize it. Um, I think a lot of people try to just be perfect and I'm not one of those people. Um, it's important to, to me that, you know, that my people know that, you know, I have hard days and I'm normal and things like that. So, um, yeah. It's pretty rare to see a Medford athlete come to the Olympics, obviously, or at least the Olympic trials. For any other girls that are in Medford that are trying to be an athlete just some advice you have for them what the process looks like in in, in the mentals just to show that that you know it is possible for them yeah um you know it's going to be hard um i would say utilize any resource that you have uh, believe in yourself and uh yeah just really really make sure you love the sport love what you're doing that's the first part of of being an athlete is is falling in love with what you do um and yeah, I would just say utilize your resources and, and compete to your best ability and just have fun with it. That's Was there a moment that you knew you were in love with shot put out of all the other sports you were doing? Yeah, I think when I got to high school and I and I saw the biggest thing for me was seeing body diversity. Um, I grew up a soccer player, so, you know, I was kind of around smaller people my whole life and I was kind of bigger. And so seeing that, you know, like, whoa, there are more bigger people out here that are super talented and gifted. That was just like, OK, this makes me feel like I belong. Um, I remember going to a, a throws camp one summer, Ironwood throws camp, and I got to see so much body diversity and so much talent in these people. So um, that really made me fall in love with the sport. I felt like I belonged. I felt like um, I fit in and things like that. So, yeah. A couple more. What was your position in soccer? I was a center back. Yes. Defense all the way. <laughs> Short sprints, walk back. <laughs> What are the, maybe the extra challenges of moving from more of the team sports to something mm. that's solely individual? Yeah, that's that was definitely a hard transition for me. Um, I'm somebody that doesn't like attention. Um, so these three cameras in front of me are a little <laughs> tough. Um, but yeah, I think, 
you know, being in that individual sport and knowing there's a lot of eyes on just me, um, I really had to work on that mental aspect of the sport. Um, Cause in soccer, you can kind of blend in a little more and you know, it's team aspect, team base. So um, it was a mental transition for me, but I've learned a lot about it and I'm pretty comfortable with it now. So yeah. Thank you, Greta.